first thing I want to say is thank you again to to the IMS and the team um, behind it. They're really ho working hard to make this happen every year. You don't see what all the work that goes into it, but you know I think you, we should all be uh, grateful to them to putting such an amazing event. Um, it's fourth year already, and uh, you know there's more of you than ever coming, so I think it's a great success. And so I wanted to, on behalf of all of us, to to thank them for this. Um, so today we're going to talk about um, the next generation, um, and I know you know a lot of people talk about new talent, and um, but I think because um, the industry is is in a in a boom period. Now correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we, as the electronic music and EDM, as they call it in the US now, um, um, is is on a path to to greatness uh, once more. Uh, I think it's the perfect time to reflect and to look behind us to to the guys that are coming through and trying to to give them the opportunity to 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 come through and build a career out of this. So I think because it is a, a good time for all of us, I think it's a perfect time to also look back. Um, <coughs> so we have a huge panel today, as you as you've seen. Um, <laughs> probably going to apply to the Giz's Book of Records for the largest panel ever. Mm -hmm. Um, but the reason why there's so many people around here is because you know there's a lot of passion now for 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 the uh, for new talent and, and the development of the next generation. So this shows you the commitment from you know artists themselves to record labels to to retailers to you know I'm trying to look at who's there to the to the media to really get behind this. Um, so today we're going to talk about a couple of things. One is 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 the the how to is an is more of an industry standpoint on talent and what the industry is actually doing today um and what it can do and the second point is going to be for the talent themselves so how many new talents have we got in the in the building somebody who's not signed unsigned talent do we one two whoa three oh it's coming four okay so this shows that you know the oh <laughs> see Oh, this is it. So it's the right audience. We came to the right room. I, I thought we went. You came to the wrong room, but we're good. So some of it will be directed to some of you out there that need a break. That need to to understand more and learn more about how to break the, in the industry. And uh, and uh, hopefully, hopefully, um, that large panel will be able to give you a lot of information and uh, and tips as well on how to do that. Um, so I wanted to first um, start with um, Luciano. Um, <laughs> is it working? Uh, I don't know. Uh, one, two, one, two. Check, check. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, here we go. Um, and because um, we talked about it earlier, and, and I think it's a, it's a very interesting take on, on your career and mm -hmm. your advancement in your career and what you're now doing uh, for new talents, and, and it's part of your philosophy. So, I want you to talk about more. About yeah, that. well, uh, what we were um, actually talking today, like before, it's like, <coughs> I mean, the impression that I had, like, basically, like, all around that I've been building, like, through these years, it's like I've, when I just started what I did, let's say, like, years ago, of course, um, like everybody probably when, when you start, you had the, um, the desire and the wish of having somebody to listen to you, to, to, to say, to give you an opinion, to say like, okay, this is a great record, great production, maybe I'm releasing it and things like this. So as, as long as the, 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 the time passed by, I always had like one, let's say, philosophy to, to, to everything that I did from the beginning, which was somehow it was like bring back to the music, what m like music brought me in my life, let's say, at the beginning, like the opportunity to have a release with, um, with um, I mean, it was years ago with um, Derek May, for example, and I always thought like as more as I'm going through the career, as more I'm I'm getting successful, I have also a responsibility of trying to build something back for the industry, for the younger artists, to be able to bring them and, and to make them to be listened probably for from the younger generation of the older generation. When you, um, when you have success or when things are working, you probably have a lot of people listening to you and you have a, a better, let's say, um, opportunity of, of bringing new talents and new 
people to the industry. You so were talking to me about, um, which was interesting, about promoters and how yeah. you work with them. And yes, there's the always like, an, like, as more as like the, let's say, the, the, the booking agency side, yeah, that there is always something that is, it's a chain reaction between promoters, between booking agency, and between artists. That probably when, when like probably as most of, the, of agencies, that what we do in, I mean at home, let's say in our agency, that we're always trying to use, let's say, the successful people let's say to say to the probably when we work with promoters to tell them like okay guys you probably if you want to have this person or this person you have to go through maybe probably to try four different artists that you probably don't know and probably promoters they will look at you like oh, this guy is like is they, they're really not appreciating because they're trying to get to the point but at the same time as a booking agency the responsibility or as an artist you're also giving the chance to probably people that they wouldn't take the risk to book them because they don't know, because they don't want to take the risk that probably the club is not full or whatever it is. And I think as more success comes, as more things come, there's also a huge responsibility for the persons who are in charge of, of those kind of things to not create a gap between the, the all the new people making music to the to the success let's say because there's a there's a big distance between both things and I think it's like probably from the part of all the people who's doing things from club promotes labors or whoever is successful today on that they are extremely responsible to create the platform for the for the newer generation for having the chance to be listened and probably, not convincing, but showing probably the world, mostly of the world, the, like the, the the acts that probably they don't know to to mm. show them like, look, this is this is the new generation and this is the new music of tomorrow. Yeah. This is very inspiring. Yeah, thank you. Another example of how you, how you can do it. Um, I'm going to pass it naturally up to James. So a similar question to you because you have also a different approach um, on on developing new talent and want to know more about how you guys do it uh, internally in your, sure. in your system. Sure. Um, there's probably four main ways. The first one is obviously through the two record labels where we're continually bringing in new artists and above and beyond are very hands-on in terms of A&Ring those artists and nurturing them. Then we've got a weekly radio show which naturally brings through new talent. And on above and beyond's live events, we're always putting new artists on those lineups. Often we're hosting stages at festivals and you know, to Luciano's point, sometimes we're, we are able to bring through a name that the promoter wouldn't otherwise book even though they're not necessarily a ticket seller. And then lastly, when the right talent comes along, we've also got like a management uh, division and we're managing above and beyond Matt Zoe, who's actually doing a, a tour with Porter sat over there in the States in a few weeks awesome. and um, Dusky. Yeah. So the, how do you, uh, I think the, the, the first step is to find that talent, right? Mm -hmm. Where do you go to find it? And this is very important also for the new talent out there that wants to get discovered. What should they do? How, how do you, how do you A&R? Um, it's a good question. Obviously, with the labels, we do receive a lot of demos, but being honest, those don't tend to be the, the channels where you find the new talent. It tends to be, I think, because of the, the, the advent of digital labels, the barriers to getting a release are so much mm. lower now yeah. that these kids are getting picked up so early. A lot of the smaller labels are releasing stuff that's of a certain standard, and you kind of pick up on those guys and watch them develop until they're kind of at the point yeah. where, where you're interested. Is that the same for you, uh, in China? Well, I, think, uh, I think it's like probably like being a label is like you probably in an ident identify yourself already with a, with a certain sound so you're probably already a filter so people are probably approaching you because they believe probably in the sound that you're releasing and things like this so the the the, the main plat platform let's say to um, to get music is actually <coughs> mostly is like internet and and, and demos that they've been sent through post it's just a mixture yeah. um, and so from the, the, the finding that talent um, to actually developing that talent and breaking that talent, what goes into this? What's, what, what are the steps that you would um, use to take a talent that you found to the point where you're ready to actually, you know, um, release him or, or bring him out? Uh, just again to James quickly and then we move on to the, to the next stage. Um, I guess there's a, there's a whole number of steps to the process, but, you know, it starts and ends with the music and getting the music out there. In the case of a, an act like Dusky, one of the things that we've done that's worked quite nicely is um, work with a number of different labels. And by doing that, you're tapping into their individual communities and fan bases and you're getting that exposure across the board. Yeah. 
Um, and then with someone like Matt Zoe, um, I mean, this is something actually Port has done very well. Am I right in thinking you've toured with Skrillex and Tiesto in the States? I think, you know, whilst it's really important to have your own identity as an artist, if you can align yourselves with established big yeah. artists, then, you know, you get exposure to those fan bases. And in the case, you know, then of Matt Zoe, we're, we're touring with Porter. That's, a, yeah, that's actually a good, a, good, a good point of discussion. Is it all about the music in the end? Is it, as you said, from the end to the beginning of the end? Or is there more than that? Is there, as a new talent, do you have to think about something else than just owning your skills and making the right music? Um, well, I, I, I thought like always like from the day, day one that I've been like doing, let's say like running also as an A&R, the label. What I've realized also is like, of course, like let's say music wise is very different also as an as an act that you want to go out and play for the crowd and and probably do do parties but it's like it is definitely also have been i've been having also lots of people with lots of talents i mean all the guys that we have at the at the label they i i believe truly in them and i know that they they have a, a potential musically but there's also probably in, in the the entertainment world let's say like in in, in the more in the party things and, and things there's always in like something that is more also related to the um, personality with the also with them um, with the let's say the um, this rage that you really want to go out and 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 fight and trying to do the best you can as 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 um, let's say a live performance or, or things like this and there are two kind of personalities there are people who probably they are they're really good at doing music but they are completely absorbed into this world of let's say the, the producer and staying at home and there's another personality who is more the person who would like definitely wants to share this let's say with the people and, and really want to bring it outside so it's always let's say the music is the first the first step but there's also a second also involvement of each person like when you are going for probably for a concert to if you want to go out and play it yeah that's, that's great, and that, that's a very good segue to, to Porter to talk about, you know, obviously where it started for you. And in this, this key moment, I mean, we, we all say, there was this say that, you know, there's a moment in your career that meant a lot. And I think, you know, for you, obviously, it's, it was a track that everybody now remembers, Say My Name, and it made a huge change in your life, right? Yeah, I mean, the idea that, that, you, would emphasize the, that you would emphasize the music and that everything would stem from that, I think, is sort of reflected in the early moments of my career when um, I, I had a song called Say My Name, and, uh, you know, it was a sort of uh, progressive trancey breakdown into an electro climax, which was sort of a novel idea at that time. And um, I, I basically reached out to a few of my idols, one of, uh, at the time, Lazy Rich and another artist named Dirty Loud. Um, and uh, through, I guess, their support, uh, I, I got to position, I think, 97 in the Beatport Electro House charts, um, which to nice. me was a very sort of exclusive elite. You know, I, I, was, I was carefully reviewing all those songs every day um, through and through uh, with just, you know, complete thoroughness and um and so i mean i was satisfied with that achievement um but it it crept its way up and um i think you know there was not a lot of promotion it was the label's first release ever um and i think it i mean i, I think it may be a case of the music speaking for itself because you know it was not it was not as though it was heavily promoted and shot to number one instead it took several weeks of going from 97 to 96 to 90 mm. I can count 95, <laughs> and uh, oh, we've got time. Let's let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, and eventually it, it made its way to number one, and I started getting booking requests. Yeah. And at that time, I never DJed. So were you you never DJed, right? No. So it started really with the music and getting your name out there with the music. Fully. I mean, yeah. I try to prior I try to emphasize that I identify as a producer. Yeah. So that's interesting. So this is one way to get there. Obviously, there's many ways. So right. th thanks for that. Yeah. Um, and so going back into the development side of things, you, you start with, you know, somebody who believes in you and, and gives you a chance. Um, and then you start entering the arena of the industry. Um, and one of the first places, like, again, a great segue from, from, uh, from Porter, one the first place you're going to end up to is Beatport. You know, all the roads lead to Beatport. Um, and I wanted to talk more about... Um, when somebody like Porter comes to you, for example, or, or Zed, for example, which is an amazing story, um, how does it work for you? How, what happens when somebody sends you a track or, or wants to apply to set up a shop with you? And how do you get from there to actually creating um, something like a great success story? Hi, Clark Warner. 
I'm the executive creative director at Beatport. Uh, to get your music on the store, obviously. Sorry, Nita. I'm going to move this here, so I'm not leaning over on you. You can share it. It's OK. Um, to get your music on the store, uh, it's not the most difficult part of the process. I think investing in putting your music out today is much different than it was 10 years ago, uh, 15 years ago, uh, getting to a distribution company and really investing in uh, a product that would be a risk in Porter's example for his first record. Um, that, that with, with digital, it's not just Beeport, of course, but uh, any digital outlet, it's much easier to get your music started. Uh, and then what you do with it is really in the palm of your hands. You know, for us, we have thousands upon, upon thousands of tracks every week that come on store. And for us to filter, to merchandise, to push that out to the world with customers every week and say, this is what we feel is the best music you need to be listening to today. Uh, that's a very editorial process for us. Uh, a lot of times what you'll see in our sales chart versus what you're seeing that's merchandise, sometimes are worlds away. Uh, and that has a lot to do with just us really focusing on listening to the music, watching what's happening in the marketplace, what's happening in bookings, at festivals, at small clubs, on podcasts, on streams. Uh, so do, do you have like a thousand people sitting somewhere in Denver under the mountain just <laughs> listening to stuff, right? No, now they're spread around the world. Now, uh, okay. I mean, between the teams in Berlin and L.A. and in Denver, um, you know, it's, it really has to do with, uh, it's a small team. You yeah. know, considering the job for Beeport, we work with thousands of suppliers versus hundreds at most of your retail outlets. Uh, and that's what makes us so different is because we, um, well, it's just, a, it's an individual yeah. conversation. And when to talk about also that story we talked about the other day, which was that really coming out from nowhere and, and really achieving amazing success very quickly. How did, how did that all happen? I mean, it's for us, it, it's the most, you know, it's the biggest benefit for us really being in business to as for aspiring producers, aspiring DJs and artists to get heard uh, through our audience and, and just connect with someone who's going to be uh, all of a sudden through, was Zed's example, was a remix contest. So Anton won two in a row, um, and that got him noticed very quickly. Uh, and that was really his sound, pure and simple, is what got him there. Um, I think Porter's, you know, a, a lot of today's greatest artists that are coming up over the ranks are really investing in their sound, and that's the key. Yeah. So from that came, of course, getting... Yeah, that was this Lady great, Gaga remix contest. And but it was the sound that, that took him there. And that's also now talking about uh, sound in production, uh, especially versus DJing and how, how this is all makes sense with uh, Andrea. So do you want to tell us fr from your point of view, because it's, it's, you were DJing for a long time and suddenly you thought, I have to get into production. I have to start making records. And, and we, we talked a bit about earlier this, this amazing journey of, of you know, step by step, growing your sound, getting your sound right, and at one point, just happening. Yeah, well, I started um, when I was like 13, like 18 years ago. <laughs> I'm old now. Mm -hmm. I want to say as well, actually, actually this is very important, that uh, when we talk about new talents and the next generation, uh, we're not talking about 12-year-old guys. Yeah, it's, 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 all, it's about talent. It's about, you know, when you're actually coming out and ready to to start your career so I started when I was like uh, 13 I worked in uh, record shops in my uh, home country in Switzerland I worked like in uh, record distribution which uh, actually gave me the chance to play uh, um, in a few different clubs and so like 10 years later I was still in Switzerland my small country with my cheese <laughs> so <laughs> So I was thinking, okay, uh, like I want to go like one step uh, forward, and so the answer uh, of my question uh, was simple: I had to produce to get yourself heard. Yeah, right? yeah, to yeah. get out there. Mm. So I did probably the, the the same mistakes like all the um, um, all the guys who uh, start to produce. I was like really euphoric, and I was thinking, okay. Uh, like I do one track and I send it like to all my favorite labels and so I had no feedback of course because the music was like not on on that level and so but I was lucky in like in 2006 I released a track on Viva Music and uh, it was like really high ranked on Beatport I was like number two in the techno charts and um, it was like uh, um, signed on, on the Cocoon compilation and few different compilations. So I said to myself, look, 
now you just have to uh, like chill out. You see how what, like the goals you can reach. So I did my 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 second release was only like three years later, mm. because I wanted to have like a lot of tracks ready mm. to uh, like to push things hard. Yeah, because we. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's, it's it's very important also, let's say to um like to arrive let's say probably to the um, to the to the dj step today is also is like the, the both things producing and djing probably they are they are they are they are going together it's like also very important also to understand probably the the, the whole studio let's say process of, of building music to also that helps somehow also when you're djing probably the way you're thinking and the way you also going to build your tracks like probably when you when you're djing so it's like one thing goes with the other i think it's like also very important to 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 go deep in in the production, let's say to to understand what it's all about. Also, mm. this also shows that you can start as a DJ for years and then move into production, but also start from the production and then start DJing at the back. There's no one way to do this, and this is kind of the tip to to you guys out there that starting, whether you're a DJ or producer, this one can come before the other as well. Um, and then so we, we, we're going from, you know, having your track featured on Beatport and going up, you know, 90, we're now at like, what, 42, almost 41, almost yeah, we're getting pretty good. <laughs> um, and at that point, you s people start hearing from you. Uh, you, your name is out there and people's lips. And at that point, it lands on Nick's lap um, somewhere at Mixmag. And, and if, what happens when that, when that starts? I, I think... Um, you know, the first thing to say is like we we're really um, positive about promoting new talent. We have lots of uh, slots in the magazine every month. Um, we have slots in our website. You know, like almost on a daily basis, where we're trying to promote new artists. We have DJ mixes. We do streams where we try and have up and coming talent. Um, lots of stuff with like DJ competitions and that kind of stuff. And we still never have enough space to feature all of the people that, that we want to feature. And I just think it's quite an important point to make that it's um, to sort of make that jump to, to get to the point where the media are going to start writing about you and you can maybe make that next sort of jump up in your career. It's still really difficult because um, there's just so much really good music around at the moment. There, you know, there really is. And it's like we have meetings with, you know, we have... Uh, staff meetings where we're talking about which artists we're going to include and we know we've only got a certain allocation and it gets quite heated because we can never we can never cover everybody so um i suppose the thing to say there is uh at maybe at this stage in the chain um you know everything does start with the music and it's like a great song is a great song and and um you know that that's that's always going to do well but i think to maybe take it to the next level and go from somebody you know go from someone who creates like one great song or maybe two great songs to somebody who's more of a, a long-term artist or somebody that's going to kind of have some longevity and stuff then at this stage you maybe need to start thinking a little more about kind of your game plan and stuff like image and you know it's like people don't really like talking about image because everybody likes to think that it's everything has to be organic and just come naturally but it's you know we live more and more in a visual age i think and with social well, n n n not just with magazines but social media you know twitter youtube or, or whatever it's like like music is as much a visual medium now as it is a sonic medium so um Very good it, point, yeah. it, you you have to be aware of, of of both things and i think it's it's kind of like luciano was saying earlier on that especially with dance music, you have a lot of people come from a perspective where they sat in their bedroom and um, they've immersed themselves in production and, and they're maybe the type of personality that doesn't necessarily, you know, isn't like an outgoing, egotistical person. Uh, and it can be quite hard for sort of artists who come from that background to, to be able to present themselves um, and then, and you know, and, and be more kind of saleable in a kind of entertainment sense, I suppose. Which I suppose is why you often get a lot of... Um, production duos where you know I've met quite a few of them where you have one guy who's basically like the production guy who stays and does all the beats and then you have the other guy who's like the showbiz guy who kind of you know goes out and is, is a little more kind of gregarious so um so if yes. you like to stay in your bedroom to make your beats find a friend that <laughs> yeah. just wants yeah. to yeah. that's really good at twitter yeah <laughs> I, I think it's like it's definitely there there is um like today there's 
it, it needs to have a consciousness that there is, there is definitely a need, or not a need, but there is definitely a, a compromise to do with, uh, with when you, you are definitely taking the decision inside of you of saying like, I'm gonna go for a musical career, I'm gonna try it and I'm gonna try it hard and I'm really wanting it to do it. You also have to, mm, I mean, I find mo more and more and more like younger guys, like probably that they're doing uh, things that they're very good at actually controlling the, not only the like the musical side they have a very musical side like very very well done but they're also as you said like probably controlling like the whole twitter and like like telling the people the way they they are mm. like getting into it or like sharing probably like a loop or sharing like some music with the, with the others and this creates like like a whole for me it's like the new generation of, of, of producers and musicians that actually sometimes i feel completely lost because i used to mm to bring like l small cities to a party that I was going yeah. like driving a hundred kilometers to bring to a guy and 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 this has changed it goes much faster mm. with the internet and today you have to be conscious if you want to if you want to like go through and if you want to success in what you do properly in music you have to definitely consider all these other facts that they are not let's say music but they are related to music yeah. to make a success out of the career yeah, yeah. Um, and that takes on to 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 talk about this with nina are you are you on twitter no see <laughs> and i mean this is a good example that shows you that you don't have to be on twitter but i mean i, I do i do probably fully someone agree who has a twitter that, for you. that to a point <laughs> Um, I think there is something to be said yeah. for that all these young people have grown up with social media. I mean, everyone knows like how agonizing it is yeah. to see like your mom use Facebook or like <laughs> see like you're a really old person use Twitter. They don't understand the culture and they're just so, they're so disjointed from, you know, all the tropes of social media. Um, and I think uh, on average, younger people are better at connecting with fans through those media, which in my opinion are the most important ones today. Definitely. Yeah. Um, so Nina, just just talk about because you're getting a lot of <coughs> attention at the moment, and so how 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 did they kind of start for you that moment where you started from you know doing your thing in Russia to now you know being here actually and and everybody knowing your name? How did that kind of was there a moment or or how did you do it? Because you're not on Twitter, so you're not. So how did you do it? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's honestly, a good I really don't know. That's a I good answer too. Honestly, I just by listening to what you've been talking here, I I came up to this kind of um, underline. Um, I think if you if you guys think that there is a um, um, a way how to break through or like a pimple, <laughs> I don't know, or just uh, to make yourself present here in this world, just like I want, I have the plan, I have all the ideas and I'm, I will make it. I don't think it works this way. To, um, I can say, I could talk hours for hours about it and when it comes to somebody else, for example, about I can talk about Andrea or Luciano or whatever, whoever, but when it comes to me, I really don't know how it worked with me. But I only know that um, to break through, you definitely have to be talented. <laughs> that's that's the really important thing. And I really I understand that it is very important to have an industry for everyone to be able to uh, show up somehow, to make yourself present, to introduce yourself to the world. But without talent, there is nothing that you can do. You cannot push anyone. I, that's my strong belief. You cannot catch anyone if he's not talented. Okay, so you have talent, but then there's this moment where you, you need to have this fire inside of you that, that drives just, you to... Yeah, so to, I think, I believe, if I talk about others, not about me, okay, forget about <laughs> me, you talk about okay. me, I can't talk about We're myself. We're glad we invited you. So when I talk about someone else, let's say artist B from yeah. the country A, he suddenly w went immense you know he he became big and everyone talks about it he's on everyone's mouth and he, everyone wants him suddenly like Psh. i think to be successful you really need to break through with something yeah like like you need to produce a hit or you need to something essential or um, very um, outstanding to have happened and then from that point it really be, um, depends on many things First of all, I believe that there is a different measure of success. 
it really depends what you want to achieve. For underground singing, success is where when like a little amount of people um, are fans of you or what you're doing, they're following you, you definitely realize that you're not going to be having one million or two, th I don't know, 20 million of fans, but you are successful and you consider yourself as a successful artist because what you've been doing and like, let's say, let's call it a product that you're putting on the market uh, has a listener, somebody buys, something what you do, something follows you, and that's enough for you if, if that's what you were planning to. And then the step number two, like the idea number two is, no, I don't want to be like this. I know I'm talented. I want to be everywhere. I want to be the part of the universe. You know, mm -hmm. I want to make music and I want everyone to know about myself. Mm -hmm. So which one are you? I, I'm really nowhere. From, You're in between from because like um, I believe that um, to be on really for everyone you need to be a special character your music has to reach everyone's heart so it's like a very special um, uh, type of a product of music for example when somebody is making his music in the bedroom and suddenly out of like like me I started basically in my like house, you know. I just bought me a sound card. I fell in love. <laughs> yeah, and it didn't in, really work well. Order. I was super, super like um, I don't know, gutted, and I had so much emotions. And I also left a band. I was really angry because they told me that I'm a female and I cannot do anything. I can just sing my mic, and I just can DJ. Oh, thank you. I can DJ at least, yeah. Mm. So, but you cannot produce music, and I was. I just came back from Rebel Music Academy and I was super inspired. And then suddenly I, like, you know, it's very important to see some, that you can do something, just a little thing. And that made me believe that I can, wow, I can make music, that's interesting. You know? Yeah. I think it's like also there's like, like probably this way, like that probably that everyone also started that I think it's like from, for everyone it started from a, from a very simple point with a, with a machine, with, a, with the little tiny things and everyone has probably this feeling from the very beginning to that you are, you are able to create. It's like suddenly you're getting to a point where you, you're taking the decision of, of try, I mean, trying maybe, you, you, you doesn't have the talent as you said, although you're talented, although you're not. But there's always this this very little thing at the beginning that makes you taking the decision to say like okay I'm I at least I am trying to go for something and they start with a little machine and today I think there's a lot I mean as as a as a, as a label owner and probably as uh, with big part with everybody who's like in the industry there's so many people making music because the way of making music has changed also before it used to be machines and now all the young kids with a computer I've been surprised and amazed at how the, like the sound has been interesting and, and good in quality only with young kids doing with only with a computer and a software that they probably get from, from everywhere, from a very Beautiful. young which is which is amazing. Yes, well, yeah, is. why not? It I is, absolutely, I think. Yeah. I'm, I have no, nothing against that. No, I just no. uh, basically think that there is a bit, a bit too much going on. I don't think we need it so is. much mm. music in this world. Do, do you guys think actually there's too much going on? Yeah, but at the, at the same in time, the there audience. is nothing really going on. You know, this is just <laughs> nothing going on. It's because seriously. also the, the all the possibilities probably we, because of the new technologies is m it multiplied the possibilities oh. of doing music, mm. which is like because before you used to to have like probably to buy a machine to do that. Mm. Today is like probably everyone has a computer yeah. or everyone has access to something that generates sound. Yeah, mm. which is like you you quickly believe that you can actually create music, which doesn't work for everyone. Yeah, yeah but uh, I think, which is really surprising sometimes, that no matter how much uh, technological progress you are facing, mm -hmm. so I believe it strongly in that, that in every age, in every era, I really don't, I'm not scared anymore about these changes. Oh, what am I going to do in 20 years? It's, everything's going to change. People are not going to use turntables. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, you know, it, it doesn't matter, basically, because I think in every era, there will be 10 nice movie directors, Absolutely. 10 or two, like to 20 great music production producers, 
or maybe five or seven uh, theater, mm. theater, and that's it. This number will never change, <coughs> no matter what you do, mm. no matter what kind of technological progress you're facing. Mm. Nothing will change. So it, it's just like um, how you say it in the mathematics, like uh, some a measure does that, that remains. Uh, Somebody, uh, do we have a mathematician in yeah, the yeah. house? Yeah, so it's like, it is, <laughs> it's not going to change. Like an average no. of yeah, every it's year. It's like a law, you know, it's like, uh, th that's what's yeah. going on. And it's been like this mm. since, I don't know, since Socrates maybe. Mm. And nothing really changes, just the way everything works, sure. maybe the form is different. That's but true. Don't, don't, don't be afraid of progress, and basically. Also <laughs> like Embrace it. I also want to uh, put out something that you probably never thought about. Or maybe you thought, but you didn't really pay much attention. I really believe that you cannot make yourself any bigger from even if you cannot imagine yourself there. If you can yeah. imagine yourself being somewhere uh, like in a bigger perspective, yeah. to be let's say a superstar or something yeah. like that, mm. that means you can be there. Yeah. And it's it's it's. Yes. I think that the, the key thing is belief in yourself. Yeah, in absolutely. The end, right? And if you you yes. cannot imagine yourself, and you cannot imagine that you can earn more than hundred dollars, I I don't believe you can make it, yeah. because basically the, the main impulse is just you. You have yeah. to push it. That's right. Also, knowing that nothing really depends on you. I think this is like yeah. the whole qu thing about the harmony. You know, yeah. about that. You know that you're this human being who has a gift. You have a possibility to show this gift, to share it with people, but at the same time, you cannot push your ego too much sure. because otherwise you will be punished. Next step, you know, uh huh, you, 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 you think you're too big. Yeah. Get it. Okay. That's really interesting um, perspective. Yeah. Um, so, you're an artist, you've you know, gone through all of this in your head, you're ready, you've got your track on Beatport, you're getting you know, some mixed mag coverage. And you're there, and there are new routes now for you to go from there. And one of the newcomer in the industry is not a newcomer, it's been there all the time, um, <clears throat> but is getting more and more involved is somebody called Brands. And, you know, there's a lot of debate, and I know there was a panel earlier about this, about Brands getting involved in music. And as a, as a new talent, as a young artist, this is one of the avenues that's open to you, is, is working um, with Brands. And here we have... Eric, do you want to introduce yourself? Um, yeah. To, to <laughs> okay. Uh, hi, it. Eric. Uh, I work for Burn Energy <coughs> Drink as a marketing manager, and yeah. yeah. And so, so in the world of brands, I think there's been a, a, a big shift uh, from you know um, being involved in music industry in one way, which we c used to call sponsorship or endorsement, and now moving into a new area, um, which we call collaboration. So I wanted to talk to you more about. How do you approach all of this? Once, once you have somebody like Porter or, or Nina out there and they want to develop themselves further, uh, how can brand play a role in that? Um, as, as, I think uh, what role brands can play in that depends very much on the brand themselves, so what brands want to achieve as well. So some brands are fine with uh, just getting awareness through music. This is what you said before is a classic sponsorship. I think this is still there and still some brands just go out and have the biggest festivals as a sponsor. Or you can go there and say, okay, play an active role in supporting new talent as well, challenging new talent. And this is what, what we try to do. So to, to give the leverage to, to new talent, what we can offer as a brand, and as well, put them together with, uh, with um, mentors or talent that already made it, like we do this year with Luciano or with, with Jamie Jones. I think this is a more a long-term vision. So there's a difference what brands can do in a, in a short term. Yeah. This is all the sponsorship, what brands always will do. Mm. Uh, we are looking more into the in the long term relevance what we can bring in there. Yeah, being involved in the creative process. In the creative pro as well. process, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, so what's the? I mean, working with young talent, we we understand that working with you know Luciano or David Guetta or anybody, it's there's a clear outcome to mm. this for brand. But working with new talent who don't yet have a huge audience or don't yet have that appeal, what's the upside for for brand to do something like this? Um, I, I think the upside for every brand will be the. The process itself, so the creative process, uh, what you work with with young talent is you get a lot of insights as well as, as on this panel, just, just listening to people. It's always you get a lot of new knowledge about it. And um, young talent is, is very open. And uh, as Porter was saying, on, on all the social media, for example, you learn so much as a brand how people are dealing with it. 
On the other side, you create a lot of content out of it. So our target group is all interested in music, that's for sure. So all what we do is as well, we get a lot of content that is relevant for our target group in the end. But um, I think it's more to offer this platform and to have this long-term collaboration. So we're not looking into a sponsorship for, for one week for an artist. And um, it's, it's more like if, if, if you think about sports, there it is, I think it's pretty much the same. Nobody's sponsoring an artist or an athlete for one event. It's all trying to get a long-term so collaboration. Long-term engagement yeah. into 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 the into the new talents. New talents, yeah. Um, that's very interesting. And do you have uh, obviously there's Bernie's doing this um, residency program at the moment, which Luciano is part of. And do you want to tell us a bit more how it works? Because here you bring in um, not only the new talent, um, but also established talent together. So there is this kind of. Yeah, so the, the residency program is for us, uh, I would say, the, the second phase after last year when we, when we started the, the, the program. I think what, what we saw, we want really to offer a career opportunity for young talent. So it is, but it's coming back to what, what Nina said. So you cannot, if somebody has not the passion and the determination to, to follow, we cannot make it. So it's not us making it, it's always a talent who has to make it. We just offer an opportunity. Yeah. I think this is a big difference. So we're, not, we're not making heroes because this is not our business. So we are there to support. No, that's, that's yeah. what, I, what, I, what we think as well. So it's only to offer opportunities. Yeah, it's, it's about music. And um, this is what we do with the residents as well. So we, we offered the opportunity to a lot of young talent mm. that went out there and, and, and did the mixes. And now 11 of them are here on the island. And we offer the opportunity that they get a residency in clubs like Privilege or Mambo to play the whole summer there. Yeah. And I think this is, and as well, get beside mentored by, as that by Luciano, for example. So. Yeah to develop them further in their way. So it's not about making another person or another music out of it. It's about developing them further as they want to. And it's all coming back to the same thing. It's if you don't have the passion to do it, you will not make it. I think this is what um, we said very good. That's the bottom line. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for that. And um, I wanted to, I can see, it's great that this year they put a clock here, so you can't <laughs> overrun. It used to be, it used to be uh, somebody on the side, usually Ben Turner here. Oh, he is, there he is, <laughs> just going, Go, go, cut. So I'm watching the, I'm watching the timer. I'm good. Um, and yeah, exactly. I want to do two things quickly. Uh, we haven't really talked a lot about social media, Twitter and everything, because you've had this already today. I think you've been through a lot of this at, and, and it wasn't a point to, to rehash this. For us, is to give everybody's perspective, especially from an, a, new, a, a new artist or new generation um, artist. And to finish, because we have a big panel, we have, I'd like to, for everyone to give quickly, we have two minutes, um, give a, a quick top tip if you want. What would you say to, to a, a new DJ uh, or new producer, or somebody who wants to get involved in the industry, what would be your, your advice to them uh, if you had to say one thing? Nina, just one thing. Just one? Yeah. That would be banal, I guess. Um, you really need to love what you're doing, truly and uh, thoroughly. Cool. wholeheartedly what else Perfect. that's it that's it. That's, that's the key i guess cool clark i think a lot of what we're talking about has to do with uh technology and but more importantly people so it's uh, whatever you do with technology whether it's social media or your studio or what you're using on stage you're a person and you're trying to communicate something to people so my advice would just be to own your voice and really control your voice and use personality and expose your personality to people uh, more than through your music. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, I think you should just find to um, to create your own sound, and like, don't believe the hype. Do your thing. That's it. I like that. Don't believe the hype. James, what what do you think you would tell to a young talent today? I would say don't be afraid to start really small and just build things step by step. Like a, a sold out show is a good look at, at any size. So. You know, start with 200 tickets, then move up to 300, and so on. Cool, Luciano. Yeah, well, if you if you believe in if you believe and you feel something about what you do with the music, if you feel you have a relation with it, let's say when when you hear it, you should. I mean, you should just give it a try, and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Go for it, basically. Go for it. Yeah. 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 Eric, what do you um, think? I think it's uh, about being real, being creative, passionate, and and keep on progressing. I think this is what yeah. today is all about: keeping progressing yeah. as well. Start somewhere and yeah, build, and build, build on it. Part of what you think. Um, I think those moments in my career which I have regretted most have been the ones where I pandered and did something that was not true to form. Um, and so I would just say, uh, to reiterate the sentiments of a lot of people here, just do precisely what it is that you love and mm. don't fake it. 
So one not to do is fake it. And to um, finish, Nick, uh, I'd say closing um, statement. Four things: uh, be talented. I said one. <laughs> be talented. Uh, be tireless. <laughs> be different. <laughs> but they're they quick catch ones. Your mics. <laughs> but most of all, uh, be lucky. <laughs> That's a very good statement. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a great IMS.